On this day in 2006, two Israeli soldiers were kidnapped. Eight others were killed over a span of just a few hours. Three of them in an initial attack on the Lebanese border, five more in the events to come. Simultaneously, Hezbollah launched Katyushas at Israeli border communities, marking the beginning of the second Lebanon war. 44 Israeli civilians lost their lives, along with 121 Israeli soldiers. On the Lebanese side, 1,100 people were killed, along with between 500 to 800 Hezbollah fighters. We're here on Mount Adil in Israel's north. Behind us, you can see Israeli landscape reaching all the way to southern Lebanon. This is where Israel decided to pay tribute to the soldiers who lost their lives. Today, we take a look at the past, the present, and what may come as Israel marks 10 years since a bloody war that for the first time spilled further into Israeli territory. I-24 News senior defense correspondent Shai ben takes a look back at the war that was from the Israeli perspective. The Israeli narrative concerning what is known as the Second Lebanon War is a complex one. For many in the country, the 34-day conflict in the summer of 2006 conjures up bitter memories of heavy casualties, unachieved objectives, and Hezbollah rockets which slammed into Israeli towns from start to finish. On the other hand, the war has been followed by 10 years of quiet on the northern border, and some now see the conflict as one of the most justified in Israel's history. Amir Peretz was Israel's defense minister 10 years ago. Before the war, he was associated more with working-class activism than the military. He had only been in the job for about two months when a Hezbollah cross-border ambush triggered Israel's first war in decades. During a meeting, we received reports of an incident in the north, with two soldiers abducted and three other soldiers hit. After the cabinet meeting in the evening, it was clear that we were moving forward with full force to war. There were problems from the get-go. Retired Major General Moshe Kaplinsky was the IDF's Deputy Chief of Staff during the war. The Army suggested the objectives, the Cabinet approved them in principle, adding some changes, including the clause of bringing back the hostages, which was not a military mission as we defined. I believe this was one of the most well-organized wars we've had. There's no question at all. The order of decision-making and the cooperation between all factors was profound. We weren't able to set clear, measurable objectives that were attainable within a reasonable time frame. And I think that was part of the confusion and lack of focus that accompanied us in the 34 days of war that followed. In the early stages of the war, the Israeli military focused its efforts on aerial and artillery bombardments. But Hezbollah militants were able to continue firing rockets into Israel throughout. Many of these rockets were fired from residential areas. You have a house with a living room, kitchen, bedroom and a missile. It was Peretz who on July 13th ordered the destruction of most of Hezbollah's mid-range missiles, which were capable of hitting central Israel. Later, Israeli jets struck civilian infrastructure in Beirut, including the Dachya neighborhood. But as the war stretched on, there seemed to be no end in sight. Even if you have a large bank of targets, after several days it looks like you're doing the same thing all the time. July 30th was a turning point. The point at which the combined political and military effort got stuck was an unpredictable incident known as the Kana village incident. 28 people were killed, including 16 children, when Israeli airstrikes hit a building in the village of Kana, which was thought to be hiding Hezbollah militants. Though the IDF expressed regret, from this point on, Israel was put under intense international pressure to bring the war to a close. In the meantime, preparations intensified for a major ground incursion into Lebanon, amid growing talk of rifts between senior officers on the northern front. On August 8th, Moshe Komplinsky was named the Chief of Staff's representative and sent to the Northern Command to assist in coordination, a move some interpreted as a lack of faith in Major General Udi Adam, the head of Northern Command. The media's interpretation was mistaken. I don't think the Chief of Staff should have announced it. As Israeli troops massed on the Lebanese border, diplomats at the UN were trying to reach a formula that would enable a ceasefire. We received notice from our negotiation team that in fact a French proposal was now on the table that was very harsh in terms of the Israeli point of view, including an immediate ceasefire without requirements for what was to come after, without a commitment for the amounts of peacekeeping troops. 
With Israel facing an unsatisfactory UN decision, the go-ahead was given for a major ground operation, and Israeli soldiers were soon locked in intense and difficult fighting in Lebanese villages. 33 Israeli soldiers and some 80 Hezbollah militants were killed in these last three days of combat. Many of the soldiers who took part had not been drilled for such situations. We had battalion commanders who were commanding a battalion of tanks for the first time. They had never done it before. We knew this. Despite the difficulties, Peretz links the ground incursion to a major diplomatic upturn for Israel. A proposal was immediately put forth. Within a few hours, the Security Council convened and approved it and the approved proposal realized all of Israel's demands. The UN decision called for the removal of Hezbollah's armed forces from southern Lebanon, as well as the deployment of both the Lebanese army and UN peacekeeping forces in the area. A ceasefire was agreed on August 14th. I say today, I believe there is no glory in war. A war against terrorism can only be assessed in terms of how deterred the other side is. In terms of coordinating and defining objectives and making the decision to go to war, as opposed to being dragged into war, I don't think we've applied the lesson. While the past 10 years have been among the quietest along the northern border in Israel's history, the assumption of the Israeli security establishment is that another major conflict with Hezbollah is a matter of time.